All right, fella. So uh, we're going to start this meeting or slash recap right now from the um, retreat we just went to this weekend. Uh, Nelson, Dante, and myself, we all went to this three-day retreat. It was in uh, Boone, Terry, Missouri. It's about an hour from St. Louis, the middle of no man's land. But it was cool, though. Uh, the title was Made from Man 2. So this was the second one they had this year. There's about 170 guys that showed up that were – it works distributors strictly. Uh, last year, they said it was about 70 guys. So the number really jumped this year. And it was a great retreat. I know um, a lot of y'all have been to events so far, like green carpet and conference or like a one team, one mission. And you see it's like, uh, it's more so like just strictly about the business. Uh, this retreat was more so about, you know, guys bonding, uh, hearing different stories. Uh, personal development and tips on how to be a successful man within the business. So uh, to me, this is probably my, I would say besides my very first conference I went to because I didn't know anything, this probably was the, one of the best conferences or It Works events I have attended. And I'm going to make it an annual thing whenever they have it. You know, I'm going to go, I'm going to make sure next year that you all know about it in advance because like I, I learned about it maybe like two months before it, the day even started, and I heard him put the link out for everybody else. Only Nelson and Dante was able to show up because, you know, it was kind of last minute. So I was real grateful that those two decided to come. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to run down a couple things, you know, that I got from the retreat, uh, tips, or uh, aha moments that I received. And then I'm going to let Nelson and Dante, you know, share their uh, stories and give y'all some things that stood out to them the most. Um, I had some notes written down, so. Uh, it's, it's some good stuff, so, you know, I think I will, would enjoy hearing it. Uh, one of the things that stood out to me was looking at the big picture of life. Uh, I know a lot of times, you know, as guys, our minds are programmed, you know, just to work, provide, and be the man of the house, you know, but we would never look at the big picture of what we want to do in life, you know, so it's times where we just, we just working, paying the bills, going to sleep, waking up working and we really not really understand our like true purpose in our like role and then we can have much more in life. So uh, that was what something that started to me the most. Uh, Michael Wade, one of the top earners, he asked us to think of 50 goals that we want to accomplish within the next 10 years. 50 seems like a lot and it is. I only got to about maybe 25 and by the time I got 25, I was like really like stretching it and just probably just naming some off the wall stuff. Like, like I told Dante Nels, I want to go fishing with my hands, you know, learn that, but for the most part, I was thinking of some off the wall stuff by the time I got to about number 15 or 16 of the goals, 50 goals. And it made, it made me look at something like, you know, I don't really think about stuff deep for real. And uh, that's one thing I think as guys, we have to improve on because it's a lot more in the life besides us going to work, uh, clocking in a lot of hours and, you know, busting our butt that we get about 40, 50 years old and we all broke down and, you know, life is passed us by like, you know, poof. And it's like, wow, where did my life go? You know, we all we can't be young forever, so we all going to get older one day. Uh, so that really stood out to me, for, stood out to me is learn the, the process of life. And uh, the biggest way that we can fulfill our dreams uh, is helping other people. That's the biggest way I think that uh, we can fulfill our goals and dreams is helping as many people as we can. And what they tied it into is this business is the vehicle for that. So it's like one of the things where you think about the pay scale of it works. Uh, if I worked five years, I don't think I would never make what I'm making now with it works. And it put things into perspective for me because Blair McFarlane, I think number four or five in the company said, you know, he'd he been in the company for 11 years. He said he'd do the 11 years all over again if he knew he was going to make the amount of money he's making right now. Uh, which is crazy because that man makes a lot of money. And so I figure if he, if he started off from scratch, from day one to 11 years later, it made me think to myself, like, man, we, we, we're we in a great business because at my job I used to work at, man, it was no way I was going to make. Hi, Annie. What's up, Daniel? There's no way I was going to make what I'm making now with It Works. And then, you know, it made me think, like, if I want to venture off and do other things in life, we all need the funds to do it. I know yeah. me and Dante were talking about, you know, starting, like, a sports 
academy or a sports league or something like that. You need funds for that. And you need freedom. You need time. And my job wasn't going to give me those opportunities. Granted, I was grateful for my job, but I never had nothing on the side or nothing that would help me accomplish some goals that I was striving to achieve. So it may put things into perspective. As a man, uh, we have to look at the big picture of life. You know, uh, we have to make this it worst thing a part of our everyday life because it's a great company. They have a great comp plan for us. And it's one of those things where we have the opportunity in front of us. We just got to take advantage of it. So that was highlight one of my, um, one of my moments is understanding the big purpose of life and the big picture. Uh, if y'all know Joe Dunn, uh, he's number one income earner, him and his wife, Stephanie Dunn in the company. He had his own little, uh, I guess it was his own little panel by itself. And he said some things that really stood out to me. Uh, well, I know a lot of y'all wives are full time in the business and they're at home. So for the most part, they're working it hard and, you know, we help we can. And I remember back when me and Rachel first started this business, we was like right here together. But y'all know as, as it go on, and she went up here, I'm, you know, slowly but surely trying to, you know, catch up with her. But the biggest thing I learned was like he, Joe, Don, Joe Don told us to go out and hunt. You know, like he said, guys like to do things and bring stuff back home. You know, we feel good about it. And I thought about that. When I used to work, work in my job, I would go blitz all the people in my building. And uh, I didn't care to tell me yes or no, but it was the point of I was doing something. And if I got a yes, I will be happy to bring that yes home to Rachel and be like, you know what? Somebody said they want to try a rap or somebody want to be a DT or somebody want to be a little customer. And it may put things in perspective. Even though I'm rewired right now, I can still go do those things. You know, I've got to the point to where, like, you know, I just want to manage and, you know, be like a damn GM or something, you know, and I, and I lose the, the fun and, you know, the whole hunting aspect of it. And Joe was like, you know, go out and hunt. So with me, I want to challenge y'all to do the same thing. I know you all, some of y'all still work, some of y'all don't work, y'all, you know, doing what y'all, doing y'all things. So y'all out in the streets or working, go out and get some people, you know, you ain't got to do a lot of work, you know, just give them a bliss call to say, hey, my wife want to have a meeting with you, you know, we have a great opportunity for you that we have and do something like that because I think it'll really help them. You know, uh, one thing they told her, they said, be yourself. So like, don't try, if, if you're not a, a, um, a magnificent person that signed up to strippers, don't do that. You know, find something that you're good at within the business and stick to it. Uh, because that's, that'd be your bread and butter. Don't try to sign 30 distributors and you're not good at that, you know, but if you can just lure customers, stick to the whole lure customer thing because, Eventually, you know, your hard work with your spouse will pay off. And those things will carry over to yourself, too, as well, because you'll figure out, you know, I'm learning these things on how to blitz people and how to sign them, how to sit a deal. Don't try to be a, like a mass recruiter. You know, find something that you can do within the business that will help your spouse, you know. So, like I said, I look at it like I'm, I'm going to go out and start hunting, you know, finding some random people to talk to. Uh, to bring home to Rachel, like, hey, I got some phone numbers for you. You know, I got this appointment set up for you. You know, and y'all y'all can incorporate in the identity life. I know a lot of y'all are busy, so, you know, just try to make that time to do that. Uh, another thing he said was, if we think this is hard, figure it out. You know, as men, uh, it's a lot of things that, you know, we just figure out our own. You know, if it's hard, we're not going to say, oh, forget it. I'm just going to let it beat me. If y'all think this business is hard, figure it out. And that makes sense because we don't figure it out. Basically we quit on ourselves and we quit on our spouse because at the end of the day, they need our support. And also we need to, as men, figure this out because this can work for us. You know, we talk to people every day. So just incorporate that talk of the business in your everyday life. So what does he say? Oh, and working hard to make the most out of life. Um, his story was very touching. He was eating out of like a food pantry. Him and his wife were going to food pantry lines. And I thought about it. This man was at his lowest point in life. You know, him and his wife were standing in food pantry lines, you know, to provide for his wife, himself, and his and their baby girl. Well, she grown out, but uh, I thought it was pretty cool because, you know, he's at, at rock bottom and now he's number one earning the company. And like you said, when you at the lowest of your low, you have to make it work. 
I know none of us probably at the lowest I on, on this Zoom, but you know, y'all can relate to me. You know, we wanted to accomplish things in life. We're going to have to make the most of it. So we got this opportunity in front of us. We got to take full advantage of it. Uh, so those was my big key moments, you know, from the retreat, um, from all the guys that spoke. Some of us that stood out to me was finding ways to support our wives. So don't just say, or oh, your spouse, or girlfriend, or boyfriend, don't just say you support them, meaning that, okay, my wife Sarah raps, she can do it. Be active when you support them. You know, like, uh, for example, if you go to a rap party, you know, don't just be a, just don't sit there, you know, get active, you know, engage, probably do the rap party with her. You know, it, it, it goes more than just saying, oh, my wife Sarah raps and I'm cool with it. You know, that's not really, it's support, but it's like, whatever she's doing, I don't really care. You know, they need that, uh, like, reinsurance because when it gets tough, we're the first person they turn to. Most times, we're the first person that they are around and that, you know, we see and hear everything. So us being there, being an active supporter, goes a long way in just saying my wife said raps, and I'm cool with it. Uh, that's one way you all can support your spouse or wife. Uh, understand the power of working together. Um, I'm pretty sure y'all have your own network. Your wife has her own network. When y'all bring those things together, things will blow up. Uh, so working together, understand, like, you know, if you have dishes to do and your wife's doing them, and you know she has something to do, do the dishes, take the trash out, you know, do the girly duties, but, you know, it's helping out everything. It's not like one of the things where, you know, you less of a man. You're more of a man by, you know, picking up and, you know, helping her out rather than having the house looking like a disaster, you know? So working together is always better. Um, like I said, finding one thing that you're good at, I already said that, and letting it work to be a vehicle to open up the dreams and goals that you want to achieve. I appreciate, like I say, 50 goals is a lot to me. I only got 25, so I'm going to think more hard on these other 25 goals that I want to do. But it works is that vehicle. Um, I don't know who job allows them the freedom or the the pay rate that it works does, but you know it's one of those things where I was like, wow, if I were to do a little bit more at home with me being rewired, you know how how much more money could we make or how much more lives we can change? And uh, the biggest thing, like I said, I got from this: the more people I help, the more I will grow, the more they will grow, and the more the money team will grow. Uh, as far as my aha moments, man, I had a lot of aha moments at the retreat, you know, just being up with Nelson and Dante was one of them for sure. Because like I said, most time y'all see me, I'm the only guy that's probably at the events, you know? So just having those two guys there really meant a lot to me. You know, a lot of people do, do, do know the money team, you know, so just really introduce some different guys was pretty cool. So that was one aha moment for me. The second one I had, was um I would think the the last night uh you know how they say this business is based on you know Christian values and stuff like that uh one of our good friends Kyle Tweed you know he sat through the whole um conference retreat or whatever you know and he heard these good stories and he didn't really know what you know prayer was or you know where his blessing was coming from. And the fact that, you know, throughout this weekend, uh, this business showed him, you know, it's more than just a rap, you know. He actually found God throughout this weekend. And it was nothing like he was pressured to, you know, find Jesus. It just him being in that environment where it's like he said, man, I gotta change my life. You know, I gotta let God in and understand where my blessings come from. And it's crazy, but you know, a lot of times we always wonder, are we in the right places with people we're in the right environment and me just seeing that was like man wow you know this is crazy because you got all these top earners you know praising the lord and you got some who not so i was like man wow you know for him to make that transition was pretty was pretty big for me because like we're at this retreat with all guys we kicking it you know and this man is saying, i want to change my life and allow god to come in it which was which was awesome, you know, because I hang with Kyle a lot, and it's like, man, well, I never knew that, you know, he didn't know something like that, 
So the fact that that happened was like, wow, you know, I'm, I'm in the right place. And uh, the biggest thing I wanted to say is like, man, we all can do this. We heard a lot of stories about guys at the lowest or the low. We heard guys who was going to go to jail, guys who lost everything. And they all found a way to do it. You know, whether they was, it works crazy or they just with that support system. You know, they found they area of, uh, or they placement where they can just help out. You know, it's not one thing where it's like, you know, we forcing y'all to do this. It was one thing to find your niche in the business. Uh, we all want to succeed. So it's like, we have to try to, we have to put our foot forward and just stop saying that, you know, we going to help and actually help. Like I said, with me all the time, I get kind of complacent or lazy. So just me hearing those little tips from Joe was like, man, I can do this. I can do more basically. So I'm telling y'all I can do more, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm pretty much set up fine. I can do more. I'm not going to say, I'm just going to sit back and just not do nothing for the rest of my life. Cause like I said, it's, it's goals. I wrote in that sheet that I want to happen. And I figured if I go back to work, Rachel go back to work, none of that stuff going to happen. So, you know, I have to, like I say, do more. I have to go hunt, find some people. And I want to encourage you all to hunt and find some people. So I'm going to unmute and let Nelson share his uh, moments that he, you know, really enjoyed and what he got to retreat. And then Dante uh, can share his, his side. Nelson? Yeah. Hey, what's going on, guys? Um, my name is Nelson Miller. Uh, I'm an Emerald with uh, It Works Global Distributor. Um, Breon, that was a that was a lot that you that you spoke on, and it was it was it was pretty much touching. And um, what I what I wanted to say is it's pretty pretty much two simple things that uh, that I learned or that I took back from the uh, retreat. Um, one thing, one thing that I that that pretty much st stood out to me was um, it's not all of, it's not about you. Um, within this business, I mean, yeah, you kind of started it just for that easy five hundred dollars, or not easy, but just for that extra five hundred dollars, and transitioning like your mind frame from just you and wanting to help others then that abundance amount of wealth will come. And that, and that's one thing that Joe was pretty much saying um, from the retreat, uh, like change your focus, change, change, change your mindset of, of wanting more for you because you, it, it has no, like you, you will get what you want in life if you're willing to help others. Um, your, your dreams, your goals will come if, you're willing to help others. Um, that was that was pretty much like one of the biggest things that uh, I took away from the retreat. Um, there were there were a lot of stories that that I uh, heard from the retreat, like uh, like Brian was saying, a lot of um, a lot of people that didn't have anything, the struggles from where they were from where they were pretty much selling everything like their furniture, their clothes, um, pawning things off just so they could get by in life. Or there were stories where, where people had um, had like a gun. Like, could you just imagine, like, someone had a revolver to their head and they're hearing the click, but they're not fully pulling the trigger. Um, like, just hearing stories like that, it was like, wow. They were at the bottom of the barrel, like they were at the bottom of the pit, and and for them to overcome that, and these are like top earners, like top fifty, top ten, top twenty earners, and just for them to accomplish that is, it's amazing. Um, another thing that I that I learned or that I took from the retreat was uh when Blair said um within this business, even if it took him, because it took them 11 years pretty much to make it to where they are. But um, even if he was able to do it again, 
or even if he had to do it again, he would definitely do it again. And um, what I mean by that is the amount of money that they make, you would never be able to make it at a nine to five meaning like $50,000 a month, $75,000 a month, um, six figures plus a month. And for him to say that no matter how many years it'll take, as long as I achieve it, because working at nine to five, you wouldn't be able to achieve that in a lifespan, but you doing that, but you making that a month, that's like, wow. It kind of like Brian was saying, if I just give a little bit more, just a little bit more instead of kind of getting complacent and coasting. Because, I mean, it be honest, um, sometimes you have fire, sometimes you don't. But it's, it's more so getting yourself out that funk. And um, this kind of goes towards my second thing that I learned, um, which is self-motivation books. I don't, I don't like reading. I'm going to be honest. I hate reading. But uh, I need that. And, and from this retreat, it taught me that, um, that, I, can, that I, cannot, I could never be complacent with myself to not want to better myself mentally. Because, um, okay, we, we just, just sit back, like the guys on the call, just sit back and think. Um, I have $75,000, and I just want to give it to you. I'm, I'm like, I'm, you give me your account number, your route number, and I just deposit it right in your account right now. So you have that money in your account right now. But do you have a mind frame? Like, you, you would need that mind frame to, to keep that $75,000 in order to get more or in order to make more. So kind of like when, when um, people, people will hit the lottery. And you hear they they win like uh, such and such billion billion dollars or whatever. But you also hear like the negative stories about it, where where they're um, they're pretty much like even going broke because they spent it all because they didn't have had a mind frame to obtain it. They weren't ready for that mentally. They weren't ready to have all that uh, money. But kind of going back to the books that uh, that I was. Um, like the self motivation books that I that I that I would like to read for myself. Uh, one of them, if y'all have a pen and paper, uh, one of the le leadership books that uh that I ha that I ordered is uh called Five Levels of Leadership, and um I definitely want to read that book. And uh maybe maybe if we do another Zoom call, I could I could let you know what I took from it. And um if there are other guys out there that would like to uh share what they learned from that book as well too. Um, that's, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I'm a, um, I'll go ahead and let Dante take over from here. But, uh, yeah, if, if there was anything that, that I learned was, uh, being a better husband for my wife, um, because there's always room for growth. Um, and, and definitely those, those self-motivation leadership books, because we all could be better men and, uh, hunt and bring stuff back to home to their wives or their girlfriends or whatever your significant other is. So, all right. Thanks, Nelson. No problem. All right, Dante. <clears throat> What's up, fellas? Like, Nelson was so inspired, he didn't even want to read. Now he's trying to start a book club. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, first, I just want to say uh, thanks, Brian, for having the call, letting us uh, share what uh, we got to learn this this weekend at the retreat. Um, I got a couple points here that I just want to make. I think the first thing that I noticed overall about every everybody that got up there to speak this weekend, um, they started off by thanking God. Um, keep God in your business, you know, you keep God in the business, you know, you keep God in your marriage, you keep God in your relationship, then you, you, you can't fail, you know, you know, when, with God on your side, with you being on team Jesus, he's got your back. That's what he died for. So, so everybody that, everybody that was at rock bottom, they, they, they found back, they found their way back to, to spirituality 
to use that motivation from God to use that motivation to motivate themselves and then motivate the people around them. Um, one of the things that, that also went along with that point was, was giving back. Um, someone made the comment at the retreat, how many people do you know that have ever gone broke by tithing? You know, how many people have you known that ever gone broke to, uh, by helping the next person? You know, that, you know, the, you don't see that, you know, you, if you're, if God blesses you with it, he'll, he'll bless you with enough to share it with others. And that's what this business essentially is about is sharing the products, sharing the, the compensation plan, sharing the friendship, the freedom and the fun, you know, to encourage people to join the business. And I mean, this week is pretty, pretty, if you asked Des before, I'd be like, yeah, it works, it works, whatever, just do what you got to do. But I really did kind of come back like, okay, I think I can really do more. Either I can really find what I need to do to really help you and help us achieve more as a family. One of the things that, you know, we keep saying some of the same names, Joel Dunn, he's one of the number one earners. This man has made like $100,000 every month for like the last like two years. Like, like what? <laughs> what do you do with $100,000 every month for two years? You know, as Brian was saying, it's a whole different mindset that you got to have. And, um, you know, you, you can't you can't make $100,000 $100, a month and, and still be trying to buy ramen noodles and, and buy Jordans. Like, you know, you got to invest. You got to give back. You got to have to do more. You know, another thing that he said was, don't join this business just to make a million dollars. Join this business to be the person that you have to be in order to earn a million dollars. What do you have to go through? What do you have to do in order to make it to the top? And those are the, the characteristics that of, a, of a leader, of, of someone that earns a million dollars that, you know, we have to think about. Uh, following one other thing that he said was the number one reason to succeed is to know and understand that God made you for so much more than just just to be basic. You know, he he only made one of you. So you we have we have the we have the we have to be the best that we can be. That's who he made us for. Um, so that's the, I think the main thing is everybody was thanking God. We were worshiping God. You know, I did. If like if somebody said you would have thought we were at a church camp, you know, but everybody was just so filled and so blessed that they have the opportunity to share with others that they had no, no other reason but to thank God. So that's just really how it was. Um, my second point, uh, we've all kind of touched on it a little bit, is, you know, one thing that I did, you know, that I, that I really <clears throat> noticed is not every guy, not every man in this business is going to work the business like our wives, you know, let's just put it out there and be real, you know, um, some of us don't even want our, our, our wives or our spouses or our girlfriends doing this business because we, at the very beginning, there's so much time that kind of, it can kind of take away from, from couples and relationships. But uh, one thing that I did learn is if you can push through those first, you know, four or five, six months, however long, you know, it, it really takes to kind of find a balance and it's, it's truly worth it in the end. Um, you know, as guys, we just got to find our niche. We got to find what you're good at. You know, if you're good at videos, then, then be good at videoing your wife when she wants to make a post about products. Or if you're good at websites or if you understand websites, help your wife build her website or grow her base. Um, if you're good at, at, at being at home and, and doing uh, some of the duties at home, then do that too. Because, you know, if she, can, if she doesn't have to take care of the baby in the house and can focus on reaching out to other, other customers, that's all going to help the household. So just don't be afraid to, to help and then find out what it is that you can do. You know, have a conversation with your, if I came back, we had a conversation, we're still having the conversation of, you know, what more can I do on a daily basis? Um, you know, I, I finally asked for some blitz cars. I was like, man, there's some blitz cars in my car. I mean, just in case I'm going through the drive through I just, you know, give one to somebody. You know, you just, you got to make it, you got to make it fun. You know, another thing that someone said was, these are your bills. <laughs> this job is paying your bills. This job is paying your cell phone bill, your, your mortgage, your rent. So you can't allow no's to deter you from paying your bills. You're going to get your bills paid. So get out there, give those cards, give those business cards, blitz people, forever, how many no's you get, you're going to get some yeses. And eventually you're going to get that one person that's going to join the business that's going to help you rise to the top. And then finally, I was going to talk about We've all kind of said the same thing, Blair. I mean, a lot of a lot of the things where we're really, you know, we're really reiterated over and over because that's just how the business is. Um, Blair talked about if someone asked you, if it took you in five years, you can make forty thousand dollars a month. Would you invest your time for five years? And the answer is yes. Most people go to school for five years hoping to make forty thousand dollars a year when they graduate. So <laughs> to work this business for five years and to be at the top of this compensation plan. 
give me my five years. <laughs> Tell me where I can sign up, you know, because forty thousand dollars a month, that, that, that that's absolutely ludicrous. And that's on the low end. These men are making <laughs> sixty, seventy thousand dollars a month. Like, that's what I'm trying to be. So give me seven, give me ten years. As long as I know I'll be there, I'm trying to be there. Um, the other thing that he said was if you knew you couldn't fail, would you try? And I think we can all say, yeah. And I think you really, you really can't fail in this business unless you just stop sharing it. So just keep sharing and keep succeeding. Um, he also said failure is the fertilizer of, of success. So for every no, that's just more motivation, more motivation to get that next yes. So don't be discouraged because, you know, he said they're on an ambassador run and a whole double diamond leg of their truck quit and took everybody with them. He's like, he's like you have to depress that time. You have to get the rig and start building your next ruby, which basically are your steps to success, and keep building those rubies until you have another double diamond, until you can sustain and keep on going and build, getting higher in the chart. And then finally, the last thing I want to say is um, one of the – Quentin Conway, another top runner in the uh, company, he had a really good uh, section um, for the retreat. And one of the things he said is, uh, what is the influence of your inner circle? You know, who are you hanging out with? Who are you getting ideas from? You know, we, we try to do a lot of pouring into people, but who's pouring into you? You know, everybody, one guy kept saying, I can't make a billion dollars unless I, unless I hang around billionaires. You know, it's very true. You know, we, we got to this retreat and, you know, we tried to get connected. I'm going to try to stay connected to some of these top earners, um, which is another thing. Follow them. You know, they have a lot of good advice for, for, for guys working the business all the time. Get connected with them. You know, get out to some of the retreats. I, this is my first time going to anything. I've never been to a conference. I guess the only thing I went to was the one team, one mission that Brian and Rachel hosted a couple months ago, um, you know, but I haven't been to anything, you know, and this weekend really, you know, everybody used it with the term rewired, you know, if you're going to come home from work instead of saying retired, then I was saying rewired, but I kind of took on another uh, perspective of the word is because I really feel like I came back and I'm rewired, you know, I'm re-energized, um, you know, I'm ready to sit down and have conversations with my wife and figure out how can I help her more. So I don't think it necessarily, to me, doesn't necessarily mean rewired means I got to come home, but I know I'm definitely thinking differently. I'm definitely ready to, I've been coming up, trying to come up with ideas, how we can, you know, blitz more people and things like that. And it, it, I think it's, it's, I think it's got it one and it's just, you've been in it for a long, it's consistency. So just everybody should try to rewire. And that's, I think what we're really trying to do with this call is, is give you guys, connect you guys with some of the information that we've learned so that we can all get rewired, so that we can all help more, and so that we can all benefit, and so that we can all go get those Lamborghinis that we're trying to get, you know what I'm saying? We can get these 10 years. <laughs> so, I appreciate it having us on call. Thank you guys for listening. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Dante. Yeah, so thanks, Nelson and Dante. So, like, basically what they said, like the retreat, it wasn't really about the business per se. It was more so, like I said, finding our place and, like I said, made for more. You know, like as men, we are made for more than just, you know, the nine to five. We have goals and dreams that we want to achieve as well. And we got this great vehicle in front of us to do that. You know, we just got to find our niche and help out. Uh, hopefully next year a lot of you all can come. And hopefully y'all still around. You know, I'm, I got my eye on all y'all, man. So hopefully y'all still around within the within next year. You know, don't quit. You know, keep at it, be consistent. You know, they put me on the stage, man, with these dark guns at me, you know, for men to speak. You know, I didn't quit and fold up and say, you know, I didn't go up here and speak for this one minute. You know, I did it. You know, a lot of things that, that I went through in my journey with this business has been uncomfortable for me. I don't like talking to you no know, rap parties. I don't like, you know, stage and talk. I don't even like doing this Zoom right now. But, you know, Rachel has challenged me, you know, daily, you know, to do certain things. So, you know, y'all like, man, Brown don't never want to say nothing. Because I don't, but, you know, as she challenged me, you know, she's working with me. You get what I'm saying? So, you know, sit down and find out what you're comfortable with doing first. You know, don't just leave your spouse hanging. You know, find out what you're good. You never know. You might be great at doing the Zoom or great at doing videos or, like Dante said, doing a web design or something like that. We all have great gifts and talents, you know, that we can, you know, show and help. You know, lead. If eventually you all gonna have guys on your team that's gonna be looking up to you all, man, it's gonna be one of the things where you all gonna experience all this stuff and be able to help them in a tremendous way. You know, and like Jeff's been around for a long time, and I appreciate you always, Jeff, for getting the calls, man, for engaging with us. You know, I appreciate that. And Daniel, thank you for getting on today too, man. I know we kicked it that green carpet this year, so I appreciate you hopping on tonight. Uh, 
Mark and Nicholas, I haven't met you all yet, but you know, thank y'all for getting on as well. Do anybody have any questions or something they want to say? Uh, thanks to Vontae. I know you're at work right now. I don't know if you can hear me. And Lisa. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, do anybody have anything they want to add or say? Go ahead. Just real quick, I thought about something that I wanted to say. Um, one of the other things that someone suggested was, I think it was Joel, um, you know, sit down with your wife, you know, talk about your strengths and weaknesses between the two of you guys. And one thing that he, that he said that I really thought was very interesting was, he said, find out your strengths and work on your strengths. You know, he, he said, your weaknesses, he said, don't work on those things. What are you going to work on them just so you can still be crappy at your weaknesses? He said, that's, that's a waste of time. So, you know, put your time and energy into what you're good at and then be good at that. And then both of you guys hopefully can, can compliment each other as you and, you know, husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, um, the, you know, so you guys can work together and build up and build up the business together. So, you know, focus on those strengths. If you're good at something, continue to be good at it. You know, that's where your energy should go. That's where you should be focusing it because that's where you're going to find your success within this business. Thanks, Don. Uh, so we got Maurice came on late. So I'll give you a brief rundown, Maurice, of what all we, we discussed. So basically, we talked about the retreat we just been on. Uh, the three-day retreat, as I stated, uh, made for more, too. It was basically a retreat that helped personal development and, you know, learn about the business and ways to improve yourself as a man, husband, business owner, and just finding out your purpose in life. Um, we touched on everything, but it was recorded. So, you know, after I record it and do all the stuff I'm going to do with it, I'll post it back so you can rewatch it. But that was just this call to reco re recap the Made for Man 2 retreat. Uh, any more questions from anybody? We can close it out. No questions? Well, thank y'all for hopping on. Um, I hope it was helpful. Like I said, man, biggest advice I give to y'all right now is go out and hunt. You know, it all, we all feel better if we go out and bring something home to our spouse, girlfriend, that'll help them grow in their business and it'll also help us to be more confident in what we do. Because like I said, we are made for more. We have goals. We have dreams. And we had a vehicle to help us do it. It works. So thank y'all for hopping on. Till next time. Peace.